Hello everybody, Gavin McCormack here. This week we're talking all about famous explorers from the early years of exploration in Antarctica. And we're here with Jeff, a historian. Hello Jeff. Hi Gavin. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Now we are in a museum and behind us you can see the James Caird, which was actually the boat that Shackleton used when he sailed away from Elephant Island in an attempt to rescue his men. Tell us about this vessel. How was it created? It looks small. Mm-hmm. It is very small. Uh, the James Caird is named after one of the donors of the expedition, so someone who would have given funds to Shackleton to go on the expedition. And this is actually a replica. This isn't the actual ship, although the actual ship still does exist, the actual boat. But the James Caird was 22 feet long, and she was built as a lifeboat, as a light skiff for the endurance for the main ship. Now, what they did was they reinforced it and built up, this is called the freeboard, and they built up the freeboard higher and higher so that the waves wouldn't slosh over the top of the ship and come in, in board. And the man who did all this was the ship's carpenter, a man named Henry McNish. And without him, they probably wouldn't have been able to go on such a journey. Now, he took six men with him, or there were six men in total, mm -hmm. and uh, it's very small. What, how did they sleep? What did they eat? It doesn't seem like there's many rooms. Yeah, so there were six men on board the lifeboat and they would all be underneath here. They actually called it the parlor. It doesn't seem like much of a parlor to me, but they called it the parlor. And three men would be on rest while three men were on duty. Now this was a 1300 kilometer journey with these six men in here and they had to navigate and do all this stuff. So three men would sleep or attempt to sleep. I don't think they really slept very much yeah. while the other three either bailed water out or were in charge of navigation or steering the vessel itself. Now that was my next question is, um, it's very small in the Drake Passage and the Scotia Sea, the waves are very big. How dangerous was it and what happened when waves came into the hull? Yeah, so you can see over the top of the ship that they did build a deck to keep the vast majority of the water out, although a lot would get in and they would encounter hurricane force winds on their journey, on this 1300 kilometer journey. It must have been an absolutely miserable experience. It's a, it's a true human feat that they got through it. Now, what did they eat? Were they fishing? Were they, did they take, a, were they stores on board? How would that work? Yeah, it's a great question. So no, they weren't fishing. What they were doing is they still had supplies from the endurance. So they had pemmican, which is, which, imagine the energy bar of the day oh, yes. would be pemmican. Right, but they also had some seal stores and some penguins that they had harvested while on Elephant Island at Point Wild. Right, so all they would be doing is cramming into here, trying to keep warm. Uh, was it possible to keep warm? I mean, water's coming in, it's freezing conditions. What were they wearing? Yeah, Gavin, I think it would be nearly impossible for them to have kept warm. They would be wearing all woolen clothing, right? So they would have that wool, as we know, when it gets wet, it still keeps you warm, it still retains some body heat, but they would have been wet and uncomfortable, very uncomfortable for the majority of their journey. Now, how long did it take them to, uh, to achieve this feat? They sailed from Elephant Island all the way to South Georgia in terms of finding rescue. How long was the journey? So they went out, they left Elephant Island, and 16 days later they would arrive at South Georgia. What do you think about a 16 day trip in this boat? I could not handle it, 100%, yes. And I'm guessing it was powered by wind. There's some sails here. Mm -hmm. So they had two masts, which means two points where they could attach sails to, one forward and one aft. And they were able to put up a decent amount of sail, and that's how they propelled the ship. They were not rowing. The last question I have is, how would they find their way? How did they know that from Elephant Island to South Georgia is in this direction? What were they using? We can see this amazing model of Shackleton at the back here. How was he finding the way? Yeah, so the captain of the Endurance came along on this adventure as well. And that would have been Captain Frank Worsley, a man from New Zealand. And he was a tremendous celestial navigator. He could navigate by the sun and by the stars using an instrument called a sextant. Wow, that's unbelievable. They would look up at the stars, they would use the sun, and that would help them find the direction. Yes, it would all coordinate to the time of day, and then there was some trigonometry that he would have to go do down below. He would have to concentrate incredibly hard and really be very precise during this journey. It's a true feat. I think 
that there's a possibility that Frank Worsley was an X-Man. An X-Man. <laughs> now, this week, we want you to continue your investigation into Shackleton and the way that he led his men. This week is all about leadership and how you can use the experience that you've seen here that Jeff has explained, how Shackleton and his men achieved this crazy, crazy 1,300 kilometer journey across the Scotia Sea to rescue all of the men waiting on Elephant Island. Jeff, it's been a pleasure. Absolutely, Gavin. Thank you so much. See you next time.